evening once again. Can I see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you guys for joining this call. I so much appreciate it. All right, so today we're talking about introduction to doc as code. Now, doc as code is documentation as code, which means you're treating your documentation as code. Now, writing, revising, and publishing, you know, steps can be made more efficient using documentation techniques, which is known as doc as code. So just like the way you publish your document on um, Google Docs, on um, Notion, you know, on diff like Medium, Dev.to, Hashnode, how you publish your content now. Now imagine you want to publish your content there. You want to have a draft version. I want somebody to make changes to that or probably for somebody to make drop a comment. You know, it's, it's very difficult to, to work with those processes and also to track the changes and probably come back to history. You know, you can do that with, um, you can do that with, with your Google, Google Docs. You know, you can just give somebody a right, a right access, edit access or a comment access. They make comments, give somebody an edit access. They can make changes to this, you know, but when you, I don't think there is a way you can even go back to history. If somebody make changes and saves, you can go back to history. So, but when you have this doc at code process, it makes the process very easy. It makes everybody work together. Now, Docker's code, as the name suggests, handles documentation like code base. Just like the way you have your code base, the way you store your code base on code storage like yeah, GitHub, and uh, Bitbucket, and GitLab. That is how you also store your, your documents on GitHub. Same practice of pushing your code from um, any text editor of your choice. Let's use, for instance, VS Code, push it to GitHub. That is how you also do the documents too. Now, documentation as code recommends writing in a plain text markup language like Markdown. So, Markdown is the preferred markup language used in Docker code. Now, pushing that documentation through an automated pipeline, you can use an automated pipeline, which is called CI CD. Just like you have your GitHub action, you have your Jenkins and SQL CI that will help you automate the processes of pushing your docs from VS Code down to your code storage. So let's use GitHub as as example. So you can push it down to GitHub using it. So now imagine developers making changes and somebody is in US, you're in Nigeria, and you have another person in Kenya, and you're making changes on a particular document. You're having somebody working on introduction, the other person working on about us, you have the other person working on installation, and you guys are working on the same document, making several changes to whatever you want to make on that, on that particular document. Now, without even having conflict, which is really, really awesome. So that is the idea of Docker School, bringing that documentation process into sorry bringing that code base process the programming storing of codes pushing from one id down to the code storage that same process that same idea you now have it with documentation now what is the docker code features or you call the ingredients or call it the made features now one is the writing format which i stated earlier that the writing format is recommended writing formats is plain text markup language markdown so now the next thing for you to know is that they are being engineered by the static style generator so we have different static style generators we have docker serials you have um Jen sorry you have um, um, um mk docs you have doxify you have Hugo, you have Jenky, um the jekyll and you have so many of them so these static style generators, the formats they support is Markdown. So that is why Markdown is more like the recommended format. Now, the next one is the version control system. So it uses, because it's Docker code, which is just having simple as a code base being pushed to GitHub. So it uses the version control system, which is the popular one called Git. Now you also involve the continuous integration process. So you use, um, if it's on GitHub, it's preferred to use GitHub Action, but you can use SQL CI or Jenkins or 
any one you prefer, but GitHub Action is more like preferred where you work with GitHub. Now, the next one is collaborating with other writers using version control. Now, you have a subliminal expert, somebody you're supposed to get an information from. Now, you're writing on a particular topic and you want to make changes. Okay, you can kind of push your changes. Now, you submit it to the engineer to go through. Now, looking at it, the engineer will probably, okay, I think you need to make some changes here. Now, he can easily help you make those changes and even match. So it's easy, the collaboration with the engineers and the writers and every other stakeholders in the company or startup, you know, will be very smooth and easy using Docker School. Now, running validation check. You can, instead of using Grammarly, probably, which is very, very necessary. So even using Grammarly, you might maybe make some mistakes or errors or skip some certain things you probably need to remove or something. Now you copy that from Grammarly, put it on your text editor, add your um, Markdown syntax, and you push. You can push errors and um, misspellings down to your to your to your GitHub uh, GitHub code base. Now GitHub and um, sorry. So there are tools that can help to run these validation checks. We have tools that can check for grammatical errors. We have tools automatically that can check for spelling errors and punctuation errors and every other errors necessary. So one of them is Veil, V-A-L-E. So this Veil can help check for grammatical errors and all that, spelling errors, so you don't push um, mistakes. So instead of having you push it there, it will highlight those errors for you and you would now make those changes. Now imagine you don't have that in place. Okay, let's say you have, uh, you have your Google Docs with so many errors and all that you push and you just give it to your give the link share link to your engineer to go through before you want to publish it when a person goes through it and has seen so many spelling errors and uh, you're having so many punctuation misplaced words and all that so but when you have a validation tool like this that can automatically check it for you it will be very easy so that is these are the features of docker scroll now the advantage is developer docs contribution you know you really have it's easier for developers to contribute to the docs themselves when you go to google docs or when you go to any other docs you just get to see the github the github button or github text they are telling you you can make changes or you can probably see edit here so maybe like for myself i was going through the kotlin documentation i saw uh, some spelling errors so i used the edit here submitted my suggestions and corrections and it was merged and i got a message of thanks for helping us to improve the docs you know i'm an engineer and it's very easy for me to make changes to that so this will help people everybody to help make changes to the docs and make the doc the docs very good so that also brings us to collaboration so it's easier for everybody to work all the authors the writers the developers even the users just like myself I was a user of Kotlin. I was not the um, engineer that built the doc or probably engineer that even built the Kotlin language or improving the Kotlin language, but I was just a user going through the docs trying to understand the particular tool that was built using Kotlin. And I saw that error and I decided to I decided to help as a user. So it will foster collaboration and also the devs contribution. Now, before I continue, because this is practical section so if you have vs code right now you can open your vs code you have different static style generators that are available that can be used but i decided to just pick docker solos for us to work with i don't have any specific reason i just felt like using it so you have docker solos you have um Docsify, you have MK Docs, you have ViewPress, you have Google, different Docker School, study style generator available that can help you with Docker School and um, methodology or process. So, but today you're going to use Docker Server. So, but because of time, I've installed this already, else would have, it would take so much time. So, I can also share the link to the official docs. So, you will copy this in your VS Code and you will install. 
So this will install Docker Salus for you. And you you cd into this my website folder, then you do npm run start. So npm run start would now run the development review section for you. So that's where you can make your changes before you publish for the public to see. So this is build. Build will now build it, give you the public folder where you can now push and host it for the public to see. So let's let me check. So can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. So let me console this. So the first thing I did, which I showed you, anyway, what is this? So the first thing I did was to install using this. So this will install the whole packages that we need. Then after installing, I've already I'm already in this my website folder. Okay. So if you look here, you will see that this is the only folder we have here. So now this will be automatically generated by Docker Seros for you. So I'm already there. Then the next thing for me to run is npm run start. So this will not run the development environment for us where we can make changes before you push. Okay, now, so this is uh, how easy it is. What I did was just installing and running this and we have these docs like this so it's very easy for you to build um static site generators like this using docker using docker Solos or doxifier or hugo now they have different things that you can work with so you just have to make some changes to it and you're good to go now with this i can decide to change this logo i can decide to change the name i can decide to change whatever i want to change right here and the changes will reflect immediately now, looking at these docs, you see it already came with this GitHub that will take me directly to the GitHub. If I want to make changes to that, you know, I can use my daylight team. This is already automatically added. You see it has a footer making it easy for you. You can now go back to this. Now, if I want to make changes to this, now we have my site as the name. And look at the, my site here. So we go to. And make this paper. So you go to my website, open the folder, you look for this, this Lucasilos config.js. Now, config is configuration. So this is where you make changes, where you configure and modify or customize your docs to the way you want. So this is my site. This is the title. This is the tagline. This is the URL. This is the base URL, the unbroken links, or the fab icon, which is what you have there, the organization name, project name. So this is where you make your changes. Now, this is for translation. So you have your local to English. You can add as many languages as you want. So coming down, you make changes to, this is like the configuration file where you make changes to the look and feel of your docs. Now, this is the edit URL in that github url so you can change this if you push this to github you can change that this github URL you have here to the one you 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 to the actual repo of these docs now this is the blog this is what we have here show reading time you can show reading time through or not so now let's start with this let's start from here so this is my site and the tagline dinosaur so my site and this so now let's change this to Our docs. This is the title. The title of the docs. This is the title of the docs. So, if you want to make changes to this title of the docs, come here and make changes to this. So, this 
So for us to check, this is where we have the, our first doc. So we want to also change this. Installation. So going down, let's say we want to make changes to this nav section, we'll call it So looking here, we're having our docs no longer my site. Now we have this as tutorial, we have this as blog. If you want to make changes to this nav bar, this is the nav bar, this is your title. So we can call this instead of tutorial, we call it docs. And what are we having here? We are having our docs. So this is how you make changes to this. Okay, now let's go down, click on docs. Now this is our actual docs. You have all this as default, very awesome. These are the necessary features. So I'll probably list out the necessary things you need to see in a complete documentation. So we have this coming down, you can create a page. Now, if you want to add an extra uh, information, so let's go to our docs. So we are having tutorial basics and tutorial extra. Now this is our docs, this is the tutorial basics, and this is the tutorial extra. So to add our own, let's just check if we can add our own. We add a new folder, we call it Option. Sorry, please. The installation. Where where are we putting the link? I dropped the link in the chat. No, I know. As in, where is the installation? Is it in the VS Code? Yes. You will create a new folder and open your terminal in VS Code. Then you use that installation um, command. Let me drop installation command for you. It is installation command. Okay. Okay, so can you mute, please? Oh, sorry. And to save. So we have tutorial basics, tutorial extra, and I have introduction. So if you click on introduction, you have hello. You click on hello, you have this. So this is how to add, if you want to add more information to it. So now going to this first one, you see you have this by the side. So this can be added when you use your H2 tag. So looking at this, we don't have that, so we can add that. So let's say we have here. So what are we having here now? We have our second intro because we use the H2 tag, which is the double hash. So if you have more, Decide to add more. You also have this. Now this makes it very easy for you to get to, to get to content. 
Now, let's say I, I, I'm here right now and I probably want to go up and the page is too long. If I click this, it takes me to here. Okay, maybe um, I want to get down. I want to probably submit my new start something. You click this, it will take you down there. Very easy. So when you go to documentation and you don't find this by this by the right hand side, that shows you that that doc needs to be improved. So these are the little little features that you need to see in the docs. This and for the docs not to have a search feature, you need to add a search feature. So our docs is not complete doc because we don't have a search feature. So going through the docs, we see how to add pages, docs, how to add the docs, create a new doc, create a nice sidebar, the blog, the markdown feature. So this is where you would see. So look, I have code block, you have tabs. We have this, let's see if you can see. Okay, this is search. And they also have SEO. So, you know, a dog that does not have SEO feature is not supposed to be used because your dogs won't be read by anybody, just by you and your team alone. Let's check our blog. So this is the blog. Now the blog has a read time. Blog has a read time and date. And this is how the blog looks like. So now let's say we click this welcome and you're reading about this. And there is an option in our config file. This is nav, this is nav bar. This is the title, this is the logo. This is where I can make those changes. Now we have the footer where I can make other changes to, to change probably whatever you want. I think in the nav bar we have did I see that? This is our docs. This is where I can make changes to the docs section. And this is where I can make changes to the blog. So you can also go to the, you can also go to the official documentation and read more about this blog section, probably what to do and how to add information and a lot about that. So we have that, we have that reach time and they said we can disable. So showing it's time to or false. So we say false, don't show us read time. So looking at this place, we don't have that read time telling us that to take how many minutes or how many seconds to probably read this. We don't have it, we only having the date here. So if we put that to true, Remember, we don't have it here. If we save this and come here, we're having it one minute read. Is this is for three minutes? So this is how you make changes to this. So you work with the dogs. They will probably give you the guide. This is the dogs that will help you guide you to make changes and update your your the Casillas dogs. Okay. So you, here, this is. Let's check this. Let's open the blog. Open one of the blog. Okay, let's check this one. Okay, so here we're having our slog, the first blog post, the title, you're having the author name, you're having the title of the blog, you're having the URL, you're having the image URL, and you're having the tags. So which one is this first blog post? Let us check this, which one is this one? Okay, first blog post. Okay, so this is the name. This is the name. So I can change this name to my name. Let's change to my name. So you're having the URL, you're having the title. What's the title? This is the title. So we can take change this to Introduction to the Casillas, we're having it here. Now, this is the actual content. Look at the actual content. Okay, I love playing. Let me see. Now, this is the tags. Now, look at that awesome stuff I'm talking about. 
you can now edit this page. Now editing this page, let us check. This is the URL. Now this is the section. This is the actual section. This is on Bukafio's um, page, GitHub repo. So this is that actual content. Look at the name, look at the title, look at the URL. So as a normal user, maybe I think this this is wrong. I want to probably make some suggestion. You can just make a suggestion. This is where you can do it. Start making your suggestion from here, and you send your pull request. And if they like it, they will make it. Make changes to your docs. You can make changes from here to here. You can make changes from this copyright. You can make changes to whatever you have in your footer. This is the header, this is the footer, this is the body, this is the title, this is the nav bar. You have this other feature the GitHub and the day nine team here. So you can make changes to whatever you want to make changes here. You have all the power to do that from your config, the Gazros of config file. So you can also start playing around with this. It's going to help you to understand it more.